welcome to the lecture on introduction and classification of forging processes. So, in this lecture we are going to now discuss about the type of forming processes and their classification and their introduction. So, among them we are going to start discussing about the process of uh, forging. So, first of all what is forging that we must know. So, forging is uh, working of metal into a useful shape by hammering or pressing. So, what happens that uh, many a times you require to get the different shape of the objects and for that normally you have the dies in the die you. Uh, so, in between the die the component is placed and then it is basically compressed uh, with the uh, in, in between the dies. Now, that is what the forming processes are in the case of rolling you have two rolls and in between the uh, material will be compressed. Similarly, in the case of forging you have uh, two dies and uh, in between the material is to be you know pressed and uh, in that uh, there may be groove inside uh, the die. So, the thing is that whatever is the groove inside the die when the material is pressed the metal will flow uh, depending upon how uh, where it has to flow where it is getting the you know way uh, so that it flows. So, that way that is uh, the process of forging and uh, during that process uh, uh, you, you know whatever happens in the case of forming methods like you have the development of fibrous structure, you have the dis disappearance of any kind of uh, you know discontinuities or defects in the stock like uh, you have the blow holes or uh, shrinkage cavities they are disappeared. You have the development of fibrous structure also uh, when you do that process in sequence in a proper manner. So, that way uh, this uh, forging uh, method is uh, you know carried out and uh, uh, most of the automobile components they are made by uh, this process. So, in this case basically you are applying the force from the, the top or you are applying maybe on the sideways also you apply. So, that uh, it will go and it will compress it or it you may also draw it you may can increase its length you can decrease its length. So, it happens uh, in, in that process. So, that is the process of uh, forging. Now, let us uh, discuss about uh, the how we can classify this uh, forging methods. So, as uh, usual when we try to classify these uh, different type of manufacturing processes then first of all we uh, try to uh, classify based on the temperature. So, if we try to uh, classify based on temperature then you have hot forging and cold forging. So, uh, uh, as uh, usual when we are going talking about hot forging when the stock is heated to a higher temperature higher than its uh, decrystallization temperature then we call this process as hot forging temperature hot forging process and if we do it uh, below that temperature then we call it as the cold forging uh, you know uh, processes. So, when you have the you know larger degree of deformation required in that ca case you will go for the hot forging processes because at higher temperatures you can go for higher degree of reduction because the flow stress requirement is smaller. And as the temperature will come down then the flow stress requirement will be larger and larger you require larger stress to deform the material plastically. So, uh, so, that will be the difference between the hot forging and cold forging. Hot forging will be done at higher temperature higher than the recrystallization temperature. Then cold forging will be done at the lower temperature that is your uh, uh, you know lower than the recrystallization temperature like that. Then uh, so, that is why you can have the metals hot forged or the cold forged. Uh, similarly, uh, you can uh, you if you talk about the different types of uh, forging operations what are the different you know uh, what are the things which occur in the case of uh, 
forging process or when we try to classify then in that case uh, we also classify based on um, what way the forging process is carried out. So, in that uh, we have we have uh, to come across certain terms like you have smith forging. So, smith forging is something a type of open forging. So, before that uh, let us uh, talk about a forging process known as open forging versus closed forging. Open die forging versus closed die forging we may see here that is open die forging and the closed die forging. So, open die forging means uh, again when we are so in, in normal case forging as we have discussed that if you have a, a, a die and then you have a you know so you have the uh, you know this is your anvil so what we do is if you have uh, an object then you try to um, forge so the movement will, uh, will be in this direction so if say flat die uh, at this place and if you are trying to forge it then in that case uh, you have uh, the movement of the metal in these uh, lateral directions and wherever it does not have constraint the metal will move. So, uh, and depending upon uh, if you have the you know cavities or if you have the grooves made in these places then metal will flow into it. So, that way. Now, uh, open die forging and closed die forging. Now, open die forging means uh, you know, when you have uh, this is an example of open die forging. So, you have this anvil and you have you kept the metal and then you are uh, uh, you know allowing it to fall over it and then both are open there is no constraint from any side. So, normally that is known as open die forging and uh, in that normally you, you try to get the, to the simple shapes you know when you have to increase its uh, you know length or weight. The, uh, on the cost of its uh, thickness or so. In those cases or you have to get the simple shapes you have to you know make the you know specimen flat or so. So, those are the examples of open die. So, dies are open basically you do not have any grooves made in the die and it will be falling upon that. And then closed die forging in the closed die forging the dies are closed basically when uh, the die is uh, you know finally that both the die have to you know meet each other and they have to be closed. So, ultimately the 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 dies uh, have to you know like uh, you you know you may have die uh, of one of this type and another may be of this type. So, both the dies so this way you can come and ultimately if you may have the so ultimately you can have a you know this type of shape. Uh, made in a closed die. So, ultimately initially they will not close because this uh, process will be in a sequential manner and uh, reduction will also be in succession and ultimately at the end uh, the, the dies will be closed and the cavity which is there inside the die when the two dies are uh, attached to each other that will be the final shape of the material that you are going to you know get in the case of uh, closed die forging. Now, coming to the different types of forging processes. So, again that is also a uh, classification. So, based on what kind of dies are there then uh, depending upon the type of processes how it is done. So, smith forging it is a type of open die forging and it is uh, the name given uh, based on the smithers uh, or blacksmiths who in the village who work. So, normally you have an anvil and then you heat the material and you keep there and then you are hammering it. Uh, so, you are basically making the flat products or you are making the pointed ones or so. So, you may do be do doing some increasing in the length or you are sometimes making it flat or so. So, that is normally known as the smith forging. Similarly, you have uh, uh, you know drop forging and uh, uh, drop forging means uh, you are uh, uh, dropping uh, certain weight uh, uh, you know you have a die which has certain weight or the, the weight may be its own weight or you have the extra weight because of the velocity or acceleration with which it is moving. moving. So, and then it is dropping from certain distance. So, you have uh, a die here 
and you have a you know specimen here and something is there and it is dropping through this distance so that is known as uh, a drop 4g so in this case basically you have uh, this is the you know uh, this, this, so normally you have uh, use of hammers in these cases so basically it will come from certain height and its kinetic energy will be stored into it it will come with certain velocity and then it will be impacting on this uh, uh, job and, and this way it will try to deform it so that is the example of uh, drop forging and normally we use the hammers in these cases now hammers also uh, uh, hammers are the one which use basically uh, make the impact on so they they basically have the impact type of um, force being applied on the, the the specimen and then they try to deform the material so so this is the type of uh, forging process where we use these hammers and that is drop forging then next will be you know the press forging so the press forging again uh, you have uh, here you have use of press so what we do is in, in, in hammer as we discussed that you have the material and which it is uh, uh, you know impact it is uh, the, the specimen is subject to the impact force from the hammer which is coming uh, from the top at certain velocity it, it is falling you know and then uh, that basically deforms the material whereas uh, in the case of uh, this press forging what we do is that you do not apply the impact force rather it is squeezed continuously. So, in the case of uh, press forging uh, when you have the die then it will be in touch with uh, this uh, you know press and then it will uh, slowly it will uh, you know uh, do the pressing or do the squeezing. So, in the continuous uh, manner it will be uh, pressing the material. So, that way that uh, that is known as press forging. So, here we use the press uh, to do the you know uh, uh, the forging processes. So, smith forging anyway is uh, something uh, you know uh, normally uh, for uh, very you know uh, general term which we which because of the uh, uh, smithers we are uh, blacksmiths we uh, give this name otherwise you have drop forging and press forging uh, are the main two uh, apart from that you have also machine forging. So, that is also there. So, in that uh, the material which will be only upset uh, to get the desired shape. Uh, so, that is what is your uh, the machine forging. Now, uh, coming to the uh, you know uh, open die forging as well as closed die forging we have seen that uh, in the case of open die forging anyway the die is uh, the surface is flat. So, it is uh, you know free to you know expand in, in the different directions and the material deforms over a flat surface. Uh, but uh, when we talk about uh, you know the closed die forging in the case of closed die forging what happens that uh, you have certain shape in mind where uh, uh, the aim is that you have to get the uh, whole uh, you know uh, final shape of uh, um, that particular type. So, um, so that uh, closed die forging that is also known as the uh, impression die forging because uh, uh, what happens in this case that uh, uh, you are ultimately trying to get the impression which is there uh, into the dies. So, ultimate objective is uh, to basically get that. Uh, you know the final shape of the material. So, uh, the in the case of uh, this uh, impression die forging uh, you have the steps like uh, fullering, aging, bending, uh, blocking and uh, finishing. So, uh, what happens that uh, when we talk about uh, the different uh, uh, methods. So, as we, we can see uh, that uh, what is uh, so first of all you will have the stock which is to be put into a final shape. So, uh, they have to go in succession you cannot uh, uh, think of uh, you know uh, converting the raw material which is there in the case of a billet or a slab or a stock or a rod 
so, you can, it cannot be converted into the, the final shape. So, what it has to do is that uh, first of all you will have uh, the fullering and in the case of uh, fullering uh, normally uh, uh, what we do is you try to uh, uh, accumulate the metals wherever it is required. So, that is your uh, fullering. So, what happens that suppose uh, when we talk about uh, so, what will you have fullering dyes and suppose you have uh, uh, such kind of so uh, you have uh, such kind of dyes and in this case if suppose you are uh, pressing these uh, dyes from uh, this side so uh, then what will happen the wherever it will get uh, so suppose you have to make uh, some component which is thicker here uh, a thicker in these zones and, and then you have thinner in these zones. So, you will have those dyes will, will, which will try to push the material accordingly more materials into this side and uh, lesser one here. So, that way we try to you know even out the material I mean uh, depending upon where how much material has to be there in the what cross section. So, that way uh, this process is known as fullering. So, normally what we is done that uh, when we talk about the uh, fullering, so in that case uh, uh, you know uh, you have to reduce this uh, stock to the uh, desired size and in that you have uh, uh, to see that uh, the this, this is basically it is not upsetting basically, uh, but uh, it will be the uh, reduction in the cross section at these uh, different uh, places. Uh, so, that uh, process is known as uh, the fullering. Then the next is, uh, so you have first is uh, fullering, then uh, you have uh, the edging and edging is nothing but uh, it is uh, it's also name is the making the uh, preform. So, um, what we do is in the case of uh, edging, we try to uh, gather the you know uh, suitable amount or exact amount at different cross section and also uh, uh, you know uh, it is uh, something like uh, knowing the preform. So, it will the material the, the, the shape will be somewhat coming similar to what uh, you have to uh, achieve. So, uh, you will have uh, so it will basically ensure that uh, you have uh, the defect free flow of material and uh, you will have the complete die fill and minimum of the loss. So, edging is nothing but uh, you know it is all uh, also uh, something synonymous with making the uh, preform of the material and uh, in this this ensures the exact amount of material which is, is to be uh, accumulated at the respective uh, positions. Uh, then uh, if required you can go for the bending operations like uh, if you see the there are uh, you know uh, the, the uh, material has the bent shape then you have to go uh, on the bending dies and then you do the uh, bending operation. So, you have uh, bending uh, then uh, after that uh, you go for blocking. Now, why bending is required because many a times if you can get that type of shape even by uh, you know cutting the material and give or machining the material and get that shape. But uh, with that uh, basically you have more chances of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, loss of the fibrous structure. So, that is why we go for the uh, bending processes and then uh, after that bending you have uh, blocking. So, uh, basically it is uh, uh, also called the semi finishing operation. So, so uh, you have the impression which is created which is uh, uh, semi finished and uh, uh, because uh, you know uh, when we talk about the forging components now you have the uh, pockets you have basically when we talk about the intricate shaped components you have 
many a places it has to go over the bent, there are radius and curvature uh, along which the material has to go and fill. You may have the deep pockets uh, or the sharp corners. So, uh, you know uh, you must have actually uh, the blocking impressions. So, uh, so, those impressions are basically used so that uh, you ensure that uh, you know uh, the, the material has to flow accurately uh, I mean at those corners or wherever the radii is there. So, basically you provide the larger radii and corner uh, and fillets uh, so that the material flows smoothly and there is no any kind of discontinuity at those places. So, in when we talk about the uh, semi finishing impression that is blocking in those cases uh, you provide these larger uh, radii and uh, also you provide the fillets uh, so that uh, you, you ensure that material goes uh, over the, that portion and completely fills the um, you know cavity. Uh, but still we are not uh, considering about the flash, we are concerned with uh, the, the easy you know, you know passage of the material or easy movement of the material on the on those corners and uh, fillet positions and uh, uh, so that the material uh, moves uh, uniformly without any kind of lap or any kind of defect structure uh, in those cases. Then after blocking you have the, the finishing operation. Now, uh, when we have finished the uh, blocking, then uh, we are concerned with uh, the larger you know fillet corner radii and so, but we are not concerned about uh, the, the flash. So, in fact, uh, when we talk about the final impression, this is finishing is nothing but uh, uh, getting the final impression of the material uh, which is uh, going inside. So, ultimately it will be dealt, I mean it will be dealing with the final shape of uh, the material and uh, basically that is ensured when uh, you also uh, you know come to a conclusion or, or, or that is characterized by some event like uh, you, uh, you are assured that uh, uh, you know there are you have some extra material which have which was there uh, you know in the stock and uh, that extra material basically has come out. So, so, if you uh, you know think about uh, any casting process also in that if there is a riser which is attached in the side and if the metal goes into the casting and then through that it goes into uh, you know the riser, then filling of the riser will ensure that the casting is already uh, filled. So, similarly in this case uh, uh, what we see is you have uh, um, uh, you basically uh, supply some extra uh, material and uh, that extra material will form as the flash and that will be seen. So, uh, then once uh, this finishing process is over it means your material is ready with some extra material and that extra material is known as flash. Now, the next process which is there in the case of uh, this closed eye forging is trimming. So, uh, in the case of casting we call it as fettling where we remove all these uh, uh, you know uh, extra attachments to the cast uh, product. So, by cutting or by uh, flame cutting or by machining you could you remove them like gates or risers or so. In this case you have uh, the formation of the flash and this flash needs to be removed and that is known as the trimming process. So, this is uh, basically the uh, component of uh, uh, you know this uh, there are the different stages in the case of uh, these uh, you know uh, closed eye uh, forging. So, that is what it happens. So, if you try to uh, look at uh, you know the um, different stages uh, in the case of uh, a, uh, a component which is made suppose a component is made of uh, made like that of a lever suppose in which is used in the you know uh, uh, automobile. So, suppose the lever has the actual shape. So, suppose you have uh, 
uh, this is the actual uh, you know shape of uh, uh, the liver. Suppose uh, uh, that uh, being uh, the one which is uh, you know a liver is to be made uh, and uh, this is your uh, final shape of that liver. Now, the thing is you have a stock which is uh, normally of uh, uh, you know any shape which is very plain shape or so. Now, you have to convert this into a liver. Now, for that uh, first uh, you know you will have a stock. So, there, there is a stock is uh, in, the, in this shape. So, this stock is there. So, this is the stock it is raw material and this is your final shape. Now, how to get it in this? So, uh, this stock material will have to be passed will have to pass under these three uh, these successive uh, you know stages and uh, finally, it will come to this shape. So, first is uh, you know fullering and as you know that you have uh, uh, in this side uh, this is the size of which is uh, uh, here and, and this side you have here. So, this is somewhat smaller. So, first of all uh, you what you will do is you will make a component like uh, uh, like, like this you, you will make uh, uh, in the fullering die. So, so this way uh, you you get. So, so, so this way uh, when you are trying to give under such die and it will uh, uh, you know increase its length it will uh, you know uh, draw out it and uh, then it will uh, come to its uh, this shape that is known as fullering. Then uh, coming to the edging. So, for edging what is done now is now, now you will further uh, you know bring and gather the, the metal to different regions uh, and then uh, you have uh, uh, this. So, so this way so this way you are going to get so that will be your edging. So, the here basically the, the amount which is required in those uh, you know regions that will be accumulated. Then, if you require the bending, so for that, what you do is you you put it under the bending dies, and then it will be basically bent. So so it will be uh, it it will be bending like this, and then so you have put under the uh, die, and then it has uh, you know. Uh, bent. So, um, that is uh, your use of the uh, bending dies to uh, shape the component in the by bending it. Then you have blocking and uh, in the blocking what happens is that now you will uh, put under this this is semi finishing operation. So, that way now it is all on the bent specimen and then uh, you will have uh, the formation of these. So, but uh, here you try to ensure that uh, the, the material which is there which is flowing in, in the you know you have uh, some extra material, but anyway here we are not concerned with uh, defining that and uh, when we go to the uh, finishing at that time again uh, you have uh, in that. So, here you ensure that the material has felt uh, has, has filled all the uh, regions. So, that will be further the finishing stage and then uh, so it will go like this and then uh, you have uh, this structure made and you have these extra regions which is the, the, the trim. So, here you ensure that this extra material which is there at the parting plane that is uh, uh, done and then ultimately you are removing this uh, uh, this extra flash and that is uh, removal is known as trimming. So, these are the different stages in the case of the uh, closed die forging. So, this is about uh, the you know impression die forging what we uh, have discussed and uh, there are certain uh, you know considerations which are uh, required to be seen. You provide these uh, you know extra metal, uh, so that 
there is complete filling of the cavity. Excess metal will come out of the cavity as a thin ribbon of metal known as flash and then to prevent, uh, prevent the formation of wide flash, flash gutter is provided. So, that is because uh, mm, you know if the mm, you know if it is too wide then uh, so, so that way uh, uh, it, because the, the temperature goes uh, less and, uh, and then the resistance will be there. So, it will require larger and larger force to further you know uh, uh, press it downward. So, that is why this gutter is provided in, in such cases. So, these are the you know considerations when we talk about the closed eye you know, forging. Thank you very much.